welcome to primary power shall we pray father we thank you for bringing us to your presence we thank you for this lesson we appreciate you our great creator be with us as we learn from your word for we pray in jesus name amen our topic is God's greatest creation. And let's listen to our memory verse. Unto the Father, which had made those. Colossians 1, verse 12. Bible text is taken from Genesis 1, verses 26 to 31. We'll read two selected verses. Let's take our Bibles. And read Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27. Verse 26, I read. And God said, Let us make men in our image, after our likeliness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Let's put our Bible on the side for now. Children, today we want to be thankful. We want to praise God, our great creator, who created you, who created me. We are learning from our lesson that we were created in an amazing way. Isn't it so? Do you want to take a look at yourself? You were created in a special way. Just like in our lesson story, Justin was trying to invent this big robot and he was saying it was going to do wonderful things. But his mom reminded him that what he was trying to draw, what he was trying to invent, is nothing compared to the things that God has created. Is nothing to be compared to the human being that God has created, who is you, who is myself. We were created after God's own image. Our Bible reading tells us that we are in charge of all animals. We are in charge of every creature on earth. And it is God who made that to be possible. Don't we enjoy eating our vegetables? God created those things for us. But you and me we were made by God's own hand. For that reason, we need to be thankful. We need to love and worship God. God created us in a very special way. He created us in a very wonderful way. The Bible uh, tells us that uh, for that reason, we need to worship him. We need to praise him all the time. God created us wonderfully and it was perfect. Look at your friend. God created me. How perfect that your friend is. God made us to be able to think, to be able to test things, to be able to hear. We have so many abilities which make us so different from animals or which make us different from other creatures. Our friend is going to sum up 
the different key abilities which we have. The five senses God gave me helped me to learn the world around me. I use my eyes to see, I use my nose to smell, I use my tongue to taste, I use my head to eat, I use my mouth to feel. Thank you, well done. Indeed, I know most of you, you enjoy testing things. Isn't that wonderful? The ability to test, the ability to see, the ability to touch, the ability to hear, the ability to smell. Oh, God is great. We need to be thankful. We need to worship him. How can we do that? We can do that by loving him, by knowing that he is God, by worshiping him all the time. We need to use our mouth to praise God. We need, to, we need to use our hand to praise God. pleases God. Don't you use that hand to steal? God does not like it. Don't you use that hand to pinch others? God does not like it. Don't you use that mouth to say bad things to others, to be mean to others. No, no, no. That body is wonderfully and fearfully made. Use it to praise God. All the time. If you pray, God will help you that you use your body in the right way. God will help you as you grow up to know these things that this body, it is the temple of God. I should not mess it, I should not change it to anything else. I should keep this body as the temple of God because the spirit of God, remember God breathed the breath of life into you. So I want you to remember that wherever you go, whatever you do, all the time you are wonderful and fearfully made. You are complete. God did not make any mistake. You are unique and complete and made after God's own image. Our statement reads, I'm thankful for my body. I'm thankful for my body. That is our lesson. Our activities two to five. Use correct color for each number as you color the picture of our world. Six to eight. On the lines in the end, write something special you can do with your hands. On each finger, write words of thanks and praise to God who made you. Our next week's lesson Ace Lesson 15D titled Something That Will Last Forever. That is the end of our lesson. Bye. <laughs>
Good morning, boys and girls. You're welcome to Answer Class. I hope you enjoyed your week. God bless you for tuning in. The title of our lesson today is The Great White Throne Judgment. And we're in chapter 11 of our series of lessons under the theme, Time is Running Out. The memory verse is taken from Hebrews 9:27. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Our text will be taken from 1 Timothy 5, 24 and 25, and Revelation 20, 11 to 15. If you have your Bibles with you, please kindly open to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 24. 24. Some men's sins are open before hand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. 25. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest before end, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Revelation chapter 20. I'm going to be reading from 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Twelve. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Thirteen. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and the world judged every man according to their works. 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let's close our Bibles for now. In our lesson today, we're going to be looking at the great white throne judgment and we'll be rehearsing the activities or the events that will happen during that time. Before we go in, I wanted to just look at this picture. We we'll see, have you ever been in a judge, uh, in a court seating before? Yeah, in a court sitting, you always see the judge. You will see the defender, maybe the applicant, and other weak, the witnesses or the public that come to witness the court setting. And the same thing happens in the white throne judgment. This is just a picture. And God will be the judge. And then we can see the people just showing the multitudes that will stand before the judgment throne of God, those whose names are not written in the book of life. The lesson tells us that books will be opened. I know we know about this particular books. There could be different books that will be opened, just like the judge opens different books to read the the law and maybe the offense of the offender to pronounce judgment the bible tells us that books will be open this book is like the history of a child it's called the red book and i know most of us are familiar with it in this book you have the name of the child for this is Ephesus own and you have the things that she has been doing right from birth are hurt and so many things. And so if somebody wants to actually know about the history of Ephzeba, the person who wants to look at this book, how she fared. Because most milestones in our lives have been written in this book. In our last week lesson, we were told of the millennium reign. After the millennium reign, the devil will be released. Remember, he was put in the bottomless pit for the 1,000 years. He will be released and he will go around the world again to deceive the inhabitants of the earth. 
and they will come together to fight a war against God. But God will send down fire from heaven and destroy all the armies of the devil. And then the devil, who is the Satan, will be bound and then cast into the in the lake of fire where the false prophets and all the beasts were cast in. And now God will be ready to set up judgment upon the inhabitants of the earth, all those that have rejected his salvation, all those that were not raptured, those that did not take part in the first resurrection will now resurrect. This is what we call the second resurrection. The death that were buried before the rapture will resurrect. The people that were dead and maybe in the rivers or sea or maybe on the mountains, wherever their bodies were buried, the grave, the water will give up the death. And then hell also will give up the death. All those that were cast into hell will be brought forth. That is where a lesson story tells us when Nick came forth, he stood before the judgment of God. This is the white throne judgment. God will set up this judgment throne to judge the inhabitants of the earth. And just like we read in the Bible, books will be opened, so many books, and these books are the books where the deeds of men, actions, the sinful actions of men that were not repented of will be read out to them. And before the judgment throne, the Bible tells us also that the great and the small will stand before this great judgment throne. Great in the form of rich, mighty men, small, maybe poor, illiterate or those that you know no matter your class these all will appear before the white judgment throne and unlike the earthly judgment setting where you have the lawyer to defend your cause as a then there will be no defense and the 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 judgment will be read out from the word of god and the witness will be the deeds which are written in those books. And another book the Bible tells us will be open, which is the book of life. And the final judgment will be given there. Those whose names are not written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire that burns with brimstone. And when Nick heard this final judgment, Nick, your name is not written in the book of life, and you are therefore cast into the lake of fire. His heart melted. He remembered all the times that his parents would have talked to him about salvation. He remembered all the lessons in the Sunday school about repentance, and he also remembered all the times he has missed to pray to confess his sins. And now there was no more time. He was cast into the lake of fire that will burn forever and ever. And that is the second death. And all those whose names were not written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire and they will be tormented forever and ever. That is the second death. And I know none of us will want to be there. We do not want to take part or stand before the great white throne judgment to be told that our sins are not forgiven. Our sins will not come before us. We want to send our sins ahead of us through prayers and confession. And when we repent of our sins, we want to continue to pray that God will keep us saved until he comes again. And we want to take part in the resurrection so that we will not meet this. God bless you as you do that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Who are those? That will stand before the judgment throne of God. 
These are those that their names are not written in the book of life. Those that missed the rapture. To get our names recorded in the book of life, we must do what? We must experience salvation. We must be forgiven of our sins and remain saved so we can be raptured when Jesus comes. What is the meaning of the second death? The second death is the total or final separation from God when man will be cast into the lake of fire where they will live there forever and ever. I believe we all want to be in heaven. We don't want to be part of these great judgments. And for us to do that, the lesson has told us that we need to confess our sins and ask God to forgive us. And when God forgives us, we will continue to pray to keep safe until he comes again. That's our lesson. The lesson activity is use the club code to complete the puzzle below. And our lesson for next week will be chapter 12, Worthy is the Lamb. And the memory verse will be taken from Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. God bless you for listening. Let's have a word of prayer. Father Lord, we bless you, we worship you. Thank you for this revelation you've given to us. You do not want us to be part of this great judgment. You do not want us to stand before the judgment. You do not want our sins to come after us. You want us to send our sins before us. Father Lord, even today, as we pray and confess our sins, we pray that you forgive us. Thank you for the primary power lesson. Bless every one of us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye.